right. Okay. Oh, cool. Okay, I guess it's working, I hope. <laughs> okay, do you all hear me? Can I? Yay. <laughs> so somehow it can connect through Wi-Fi or through my phone's hotspot, but not through the direct wire, which makes no sense. <laughs> But anyways, as long as it works, Wally, and my computer is slow, so I'm gonna get a new one. So not a problem. I'm just gonna buy one. Okay. Um, so I apologize, Simo Juan. <laughs> um, I'm not recording this session right now. Oh yes, I am apparently <laughs> recording this session right now. Um, but um. I, I, my plan was to have a Q&A session with basically the homework and um, any questions that you have in general. So uh, pretty much, if you don't have any questions, I was gonna go live on YouTube and then have the video, have anybody on the audience ask me questions. And if not, we're gonna go through the homework and see what homework questions you had. So, it's not. Uh, so do you all, first of all, do you all have any questions? Kenna. Kenna, okay. So for, for the Chanteki, uh, Ome Wan Nawi. Mm -hmm. um, Nawi, uh -huh. So I had questions on, um, well, I kind of was curious if we could like go through the, like how we've done just like the little stories in class where we translate them. Um, yep. Cause I, I know I kind of translated it, but I, I don't know. I just kind of want to see how close I got. Yep. And then, um, and then there were just uh, some questions five, five and nine, that five, nine and 10 that I wasn't like really clear on like what the answers were or what the questions were too. So. Okay. So here I'm, I'm sharing my screen and let me see what I find. So Chantekit, and you said uh, Ome Wanawi. Yes. So this one. Okay, without the question, without the answers first. So this, this whole, this whole, um, okay, yeah, we could go over this, um, this uh, story. So essentially you want me to go, uh, what is it like, pay, basically pay, like sentence by sentence to see if you understood what the story was about, correct? Uh, Kena, if people want to do that, if that's too much, then I, that's okay. That we could just focus on the specific questions. It's up to you. Oh no, it, I mean, um, I looked through my questions. I don't have that many, so going through the story would work for me. Cool. Okay, but uh, yeah, what do you all other people think? I know a lot of people do or don't do the homework, but if you do do the homework, <laughs> do you have any questions? All right, so I guess we will do this as if you did, if you did do the homework, great. Um, um, you'll learn a lot. If you didn't do the homework, this is basically one of the homeworks that I did that I would think is a little bit more challenging and I did it, made it a little bit more challenging for a reason. And um, this one is uh, season two, episode four. So this is about the past tense root. So we could go sentence by sentence and maybe you could help me and uh, read this, uh, the sentences and then I can tell you and tell me what you think they mean and then just go sentence by sentence and then I can help you. So we could start with the first one. Right here. Daniela kipiya tomin wan miyak yo yomi. I thought it says uh, Daniela has money and many clothes. And uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, by the way, I hope my phone doesn't overheat because it overheated yesterday on a meeting and my phone died. So I hope it doesn't happen. 
But if it does, it's, it's that, that's what's going on. Okay, so Kenna, uh, Daniela Kipilla Tomin Wan Miak Yoyomi. Daniela has Kipilla Tomin Money Wan Miak Yoyomi. And a lot Miak Yoyomi of clothes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Quali. And then continue. Kipilla. Kipilla Chikwase Chipawak Iwipil. Now it. Did I say that wrong? Okay. No, 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 it's good. I just realized that this one's one of the crazy sentences that I wrote. Okay. Kipia chikwase chipawak iwipil. Now it chichiltik i koton. Makwili kostik i patalon. Matlakli shoshotik ikwe one matlakli i tekak. Kena. So, what did you understand from this? this uh sentence which is crazy so she it's listing her clothes so she has six white wipiles uh -huh. four four red shirts Kena. five yellow pants mm -hmm. ten green shirts Kena. and ten shoes oh um ten green skirts shirts oh i might have just not read my writing but okay mm -hmm. Yeah, skirts and shirts, maybe, yeah, maybe because they're similar, but kweit is skirt from the top, ikwe. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, I see. Kena, one matlakli itekak. And ten shoes. Mm -hmm. So this sentence is a very particular sentence that kind of shows you the kind of the structure of how Nahuatl speakers would normally say something. So if you're sp used to speaking Spanish or English, you might say, Nik pia chikwase wipili. And you can say that in Nahuatl, but it's actually more common for them to say something like, Nik pia chikwase no wipili. So they're more likely to say it like that. They're basically repeating themselves, but that's the most common way you'll actually see it. They won't, most of the time won't say, I, well, you can say it. You can say, Nik pia chikwase wipili, but it's more common for you to say something like, Nik pia chikwase no wipili. And so this whole, this whole um, series of, I guess, listings of, of what she has kind of shows you the, the way that they actually do it. So they would say, I wipil. That's, that's like the style, even though that's not a common style in Spanish or English. So he's really saying she has six white her, her um, uh, wipiles. So they, they reemphasize the, the who it belongs to multiple times with the e or the more or the no, depending on whose it is. And then the other thing is um, I want to point I out, get that. Freaking si come on Siri. <laughs> Sorry, Siri heard me, I guess. <laughs> um, and then um, uh, kweit is an irregular noun. So um, uh, there's a lot of nouns in Nahuatl that end in ITL. And these nouns are irregular. And um, when they get possessed, they don't get possessed like how you normally would expect. So kweit is one of those examples. Um, it, when it gets possessed, it becomes ikwe. So even though I told you the general rules of how most nouns that get possessed. There are certain nouns that are irregular and that have their own way of being possessed. And essentially you have to memorize them, but there aren't that many. But here's an example of one. Kuali, and I, I, by the way, Kuali, you did understand what it what it's saying. All right, Kuali. And then she said Kuali, continue. Right here with Sampampa. Tampampa ayikana kipia se it's on a kawil. Aha. Kena. But she does not have a hat. Ah, aha. But did you just say, but she does not have a hat? So this word ayikana. It's not yet. Does not yet. Now, I normally, in my classes, I normally teach you ayok ayikana and ayohana, but I have yet to teach that. But essentially, um, it's, it's basically ayikana is not yet, not yet. So sampampa ayikana, but, and this word sampampa, which means but, it's a very particular word for Huasteca. Other varieties may not understand sampampa. Other varieties might use the word yese for but, or they might use, they might not have a word or they might use the Spanish word pero. 
but um, in Huasteca, Chicontepec, they say Sampampa for but, and then Ayicana is not yet. The opposite of the not yet is Ayocana, Ayocana, A-Y-O-C-A-N-A, and it means no longer. So I have yet to do a class on it, <laughs> not yet, Ayicana, <laughs> Nikchihki, I haven't yet made it. But um, the, um, these Ayikana, Ayokana, they have their own long way and short way of, of being written. But um, I believe this is in the dictionary, it should be. And I'm pretty sure that's how you found out. So, but not yet, she has, Kipia, say, itonekawil. Is, is tonekawili in the dictionary? I don't remember. Oh, it's up there. <laughs> there it is. So she does not yet have a hat. And notice that it, is, it says, say it's on a So again, when you're saying I have something, you're saying it like, even though you have it, you're saying it as something that's possessed. So she says, it says, she has one her hat. That's like, that's literally what it's saying in Nahuatl, but it's, it's understood as she has her hat. She has one hat, but it's literally, she has one her hat. <laughs> but this is the style of Nahuatl. Quale. All right. Oh, the, and yeah, what follows you? Okay. So well, I think you understood that one. What do you think the next sentence means? Or can you please read it and tell me what you think it means? Nelkiamati, Sonekawili, Pampa, Ashkiamati, Patsmikis. I translated that to she would really like a hat because she does not like to be hot. Ah. Uh, did you translate it? She would really or she or would really or because in, uh, it, we're not saying would that um now what has a specific tense to say would something would happen and we haven't yet learned it so this one is not she would want with something is she really likes something so i mean she really likes to she really likes the hat she really likes hats okay Mm -hmm. So um, I'm happy and surprised that you knew what Nell was because a lot of people are like, what? <laughs> but oh, it took me a while. Mm, oh, okay. So how did you find out what it meant? Uh, just, I think, just surfing through the different dictionaries that I'm using. Ah, quali. Which how I found it because it, it was a week mm -hmm. ago or whatever. Quali. So I haven't yet had, had a lesson on very or like much or whatever, I didn't do it. But nel means very. But the root of this word nel or prefix nel is the word neli. The word neli currently does not exist in modern Huasteca Nahuatl. I, it, might under, it, might exist in, um, it might exist in Central Nahuatl, but um, Huasteca Nahuatl has the word nelia. And the word nelia in uh, Huasteca Nahuatl means truly or Truly, yeah, like truly. And so, um, but the root of this is Nelly, which means also in uh, classical Namo, it means true. So um, Nel Kiamati, it's like truly, but it really in modern Nahuatl, it translates as very. So very much she likes. So very so putting that prefix Nel in front of a verb makes it mean very or a lot. So Nel Kiamati, she really likes, she really likes hats. Diego, you did okay. cover that in colors. Did I? Yeah, when we did oh. color. Yeah. I have oh, a terrible yeah. memory. <laughs> well, I'm, gr I'm glad I did. <laughs> I have really bad memory about my past. <laughs> okay, well, I'm glad that I did. Um, so, so then, yeah, but it, you can also put it in front of verbs and it means, it makes it like stronger. So it means very or a lot. So Nel Kiamati, she really likes hats. And here you said she like she would really like a hat. And, and you know that Nahuatl is very vague in terms of whether it's singular or plural, because it could be both, right? Um, but, but here, because I think you translated as she would really like one, um, it, it, Nahuatl does have the would want something, and that would be the, the tense of, it ends in skia and we haven't yet done it but if i wanted to say she would really like one it would be nel kimati skia kil nel kiamat skia kiamati skia nel kiamati skia 
would be how you would say it. it means she would really like but in this case it's just staying in the present tense she really likes right now she really likes and then what she really likes is hats so it doesn't really make sense for her to say she really likes a hat specifically and then um but also based on the context of what it says next and then it says because and you've translated this correctly she doesn't like to be hot okay so notice that um we wrote it as pampa because and then ashkiamati she does not like ashkiamati and then patsmikis so up here i i believe i did i put patsmiki yeah i put patsmiki up here to be hot because i believe it's not in the dictionary so i had to put it in there but um uh, i wanted to bring to your attention that there are some verbs in nahuatl such as the verb amati mati neki and moneki that when the second verb follows the second verb is in the future tense so this verb amati to like something is one of those verbs where when you combine it with another verb it's like a helping verb like to say to like something or whatever that second verb is usually in the in future tense just like it is for neki and moneki like i taught you in a previous lesson so there's only about four i believe it's amati mati neki and moneki so it's really like really too but whatever <laughs> so here when you say she does not like um to be hot uh that that second verb is in future tense if this was any other verb if this verb was not amati it would this second verb would be in present tense and i believe that actually in, in the next lesson in the one that i'm going to teach you next i'm going to teach you about combining two verbs but i guess this is a preview and i pretty much gave you the answer <laughs> But essentially, I'm I'm gonna do this in the next lesson where I'm gonna tell you, okay, when you have two verbs, this is how you do it. All right, and uh, but I guess this is a preview. I guess. All right, nojia keman kochi. Oh, sorry. Oops, you're supposed to read it. Ah. <laughs> no, nojia keman kochi inin sone kawil, uh, sone kawili ki palewis. Aha, kwali. So you got you perfectly under, uh, understandable uh, what you said. Um, and what do you understand? What do you think that this means? Okay, I don't know if this is right, but I said also when she sleeps, this hat will help her. Okay, enough. you got it perfectly <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So nojia. So uh, I haven't. I don't know if I've taught you this word or not, or not yet, but nojia means also. Uh, you probably could just look this up in the dictionary, but this is a common word. And um, nojia has a short version. So here I wrote the long version, nojia, but you might see other varieties say noiki, or they might say noyuki. And there's also a short version of this word. The short version is just no. <laughs> so don't get it confused with English no and Spanish no, because now what the word no, it means also, it does not mean no. No doesn't mean no. <laughs> but anyways, so the short, the long version is no kia, the short version is no. So I could have just written it as no keman, but I didn't just so I could, you know, tell you about this, but but now it does have a short version of this. No kia is shortened to no. So you might see it in text just no, it means also. So no keman kochi, and also when she sleeps, Inin this tonekawili hat ki palewis will help her. Palewis is in the future tense. So we know it's talking about the future. Although this future, quote unquote, future tense isn't really always the future tense, but um, pretty much when it's by, when a verb is like that by itself, it's the future tense. Although it could be conditional. Okay. Uh, yalo, okay, uh, Seyok, next. Yalwaya Daniela ki kohki tonekawili. Ah, quali. And what do you understand there? Yesterday, Daniela bought the hat. Uh, the hat. Mm. Or a like, hat? A hat, yeah. Because it doesn't. I guess, see, in this case, I would understand it's a hat, even though I didn't write the word say, because the word say is not, um, is not, what is it? It's not obvious. And I actually, this could also be interpreted as she bought hats. Yesterday, she bought hats. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. 
and I actually don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember what the rest of the story says, but it could be one hat that she bought or it could be multiple hats here. I think she bought multiple, so that makes sense in class. Ah, there you go. You'll find out, I guess, when the story continues. <laughs> Quali. San kish san kipishki matlatli wan ome peso. Um so I said she I, I think it says she only had 12 pesos. Gena, she only had 12 pesos. And um this san means only or just. Only or just. It, it's probably in the dictionary. It, it probably is. It's a it very must. common word. <laughs> mm -hmm. So she just had, or she only had. Quali. And you see this pishki. So it's from pia. That's the past tense of pia. Pia is a class. Well, I guess you, that's the question, huh? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> um, if you did the homework, you should know what class it is. I'll leave it like that. Kemanyaki tiankisko se siwat kimaneshti se siktik. Tone Kawili, Zampampa, Ashkana, Kiamati, Inon, Tone Kawili. Um, you know, I should have changed that Kiamati to Kiamatki. Kiamatki. Mm -hmm. But anyways, because I, that, that, that whole sentence is in the past tense and Kiamati should not be in the present tense. I need to change that Kiamati to Kiamatki and then re-upload. Okay, Kuali, I'm glad we went over the story. Okay, and what do you understand there? Um, when she went to the store, a woman uh, pointed at a blue hat, or pointed at blue hats, maybe, uh, but she doesn't like that hat, or those hats. Uh -huh. Well, um, it's one, because it says se. se. Okay, okay, I see. Mm -hmm. A blue hat. Okay, na. And then you, you saw this word maneshtia, maneshtia right? Was the verb you found? Is that right? She pointed at? Mm -hmm. Yep. So now what has the word maneshtia from the word hand, might means hand, and neshtia to, to make appear, literally means to make appear, but it, it means like to show, to show something, for something to show itself. So oh. um, ma maneshtia means to point, to make something show, show by pointing at it, which basically means to point at it. <laughs> so she pointed at a hat. Quali. Quali. And then but and this is where I thought um but Sampampa Ashkana Kiamatki, but she didn't like. So I, I was trying to um put in the past tense and I messed up right there. I was supposed to put it as Kiamatki and I didn't. Oops. <laughs> yeah. And I even I even underlined it over here as like one of the questions, but they didn't didn't change it up here. <laughs> Oh, I did it once, but not in the other. But I should have, I, this one should be kiamatki, not kiamatki, because then it says, oh, but she doesn't like that hat. So the tense is off. And that's why it doesn't make sense. So it should be, she didn't like that hat. She didn't like the hat, but I, I messed up right there. Okay. Quali. Mm-hmm. Okay. Te ipan siwad seok tsone kawili tlen ineshka kamotik. Oh, you skipped the sentence. Oh, did oh, okay. Ashkana kiamatki. Ashkana kiamatki pampa ashkana kiam kiamati nochi tlensitik. Aha. And what did you understand there? Ashkana kiamatki. She didn't like it because she doesn't like. She doesn't like like. Blue. Uh -huh. So nochi tlenziktik. So this is like a phrase, nochi tlenziktik. And I haven't, we probably should have like a class at one point on the word tlen, because the word tlen can be used in multiple ways. But anything, when you say tlen and then ziktik, like tlen means what? But in this case, it's, it means like that which, that which is blue. So tlenziktik means that which is blue. Although if you remember from previous classes, you probably le learned or I taught you that tlen just means what. And it does mean what as a question, but it also means what as like a statement. And here, 
when you put it um, before an adjective and you say tlen it, it translates as that which is um, blue, that which is blue, so tlen ziktik. And then, so nochi tlen ziktik, everything which is blue. So she doesn't like anything that's blue is basically what it's saying. <laughs> She's a she's a bluest. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know if that's a word. <laughs> but anyways, so there's no chitlensiktik. Everything that that which is blue. See, she does not like everything that which is blue. Is literally what it's saying. But you know, in English, it would be like she doesn't like anything that's blue. <clears throat> Quali. Okay. Teipan uh, siwals. Uh, kia maneshti seok zone kawili tlen ineshka kamotik. Uh, uh -huh. So the yeah. woman showed her another hat that was purple. Aha, uh -huh. kena, kwali. And then teipan, uh, uh, you knew this word teipan? So I did not know of it. Or I think you gave it to us maybe when we we were looking at like the, uh, the Yes. I gave it, I probably gave it to you in the time, um, the who, what, when, where, why lecture. Uh, teipan is the way that we say it in most, most varieties will understand teipan, it means like later. And it also has that sense in like in Spanish as in entonces. So like, you know, like in Spanish entonces is like, and then, and later, what well, teipan has that same meaning. But, um, so this could be interpreted as like, and this would be interpreted as something like, and then the woman, uh, pointed at, like later or then the woman pointed at at another hat. <clears throat> um, Guerrero, I think, says satepan, and some varieties might say santepan or something like that. But they all sounds very similar. We say teipan, but they say satepan, satepan. But it's it's very similar. Quali. And then, did you um, get too confused with this? So you understand that whole phrase? The color purple? Uh -huh. That, uh -huh. so it's saying like that hat, which, whose, or which color is purple? I don't know, whose color? No, not whose color is purple. <laughs> which color is purple? No, how do you say that in English? <laughs> the hat, which color is purple? <laughs> I can't translate it correctly. <laughs> Like the hats, which are that, the colorful? Yeah, of which is color? No, <laughs> which is color? <laughs> which, oh, which color is purple? Which color is purple? Is that the correct way to say? It? I don't even know how to say it in English at this point. <laughs> it makes, I, I follow. You follow, okay. But that's what this Delaine is doing, just like it was saying that which is blue over here is um, the hat, which, wh whose, whose color? Whose color? No. Whose color is, is purple? Which color is purple? <laughs> I don't know how to say it. The point is, that's what this Delaine is doing. <laughs> I'm having trouble with the English right now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and then I missed all Daniela. <laughs> Daniela became denial. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she, she changed gender and became a river. <laughs> oh, you can do that these days. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I need to correct two things. So now I know I need to correct two things. Okay, so Daniela. Ah. Daniela Nelia Kiamati Kiamati Inon Tsone Kawili Yeka Kikoki Ome Tsone Kawili. All right. So uh so I was still at the time that I was translating this was a little bit unsure about Nelia, so I translated it to like she loved that hat, maybe. Mm -hmm. So Nelia, uh, and mm -hmm. that, but now, oh, now what, based on what you know. Uh, so she really liked mm -hmm. that. Hat. She really liked. So this this Nelia is a verb in and of itself. So you can use Nelia as just a, like right in front of a, a word as it's by itself. So Nelia is, is it's, it's a singular word. I don't, I guess I called it a verb, but I don't think it's a verb. Uh, I'm probably mislabeled it, but be, besides that, basically Nelia can be by itself and it means like very. 
And but when it's together with the word, it's a prefix, it becomes the nel. So you can join it with that verb or not join it with the verb. So you could say Daniela Nelia Kiamat Kiamatki, or you could say Daniela Nel Kiamatki. Nel Kiamatki. So either one is fine. Actually, I think other varieties also say Nel Pano. So you might hear Nelia, Nel Pano, or Nel in front of um, here, and they all mean very, basically. The, um, there's also another word, Tlawel, which also means very. Um, so Tlawel, Nelia, yeah, those are the most common ones. There might be another one, but it's, I can't think of one right now. <clears throat> it's not coming to me. But Nelia, Nel, Nelpano, Tlawel, those could all be substituted right there to mean very or a lot. Well, it's kind of, yeah, here it's like she really likes, she really likes Inon Tonekawili, that hat. Oh, she really liked that hat. Kuali. So that's why she bought two hats. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Kuali, uh huh. And that's why she bought two hats. This Yehka is, yeah, I have I talked about Yehka? I'm not sure. Um, oh. I think so. Oh, yeah, it was in the Who and Where and Where Why lecture. Um, yehka, yeah. That's, that's the way we say it, but I think in that lecture I also told you Yehka could be Yehuatika ye, or Yehika or, yeah, Yehika, Yehka or Yehuatika. Those are all equivalent. Quali? Right. Sayok, so you, you did good on that translation. Thank you. So uh, then, Sesen, Sesen, Sone Kawili, Ipati, Chikwase Peso. Ah, Kena. All right. So I think um, Sesen is like the same. So the same hat costs six pesos. Mm, that's a good guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, the word Sesen does not mean same. The word for same is Senka. So it's very similar. Senja, C-E-N-C-A, Senja. And it's a weird word actually because other places don't say Senja. But anyways, Senja is the way that they would say same in um, Huastecanahuat, Senja. Uh, so it's very similar and it does come from the word one. Um, but I believe this word Senja, that's how they say it in um, Huasteca, but it, it, in Central they, they say Senkan, C-E-N-C-A-N, Senkan. So it's very similar, senkan and senja. I think this this ha, this senja that they say in Huasteca is just it's just the C became an H for some reason because the, the k, k sound like that k and then h. But it's really the word comes from senkan and it literally means one place. So the word for same literally means one place, senkan. Um, but anyways, uh, so it's very similar. Sesen actually means each one. Each one, sesen, and it's coming from the word one. So when they're reduplicating that 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 se, it becomes they're copying the syllable and becomes sen becomes sesen, and it means each one. Each one, so nekawili, so each so nekawili, each hat, ipati, chikwase peso. So the ipati chikwase peso you understood to mean. Uh, it costs six pesos. Yeah, nah. exactly. So notice that this word, um, ipati, this, this is how you're saying something costs something. Um, in Nahuatl, it's not a verb. It doesn't, it's not a verb saying like something costs this amount. Instead in Nahuatl, it's a noun that is possessed, kind of like um, per, some prepositions are possessed. So really it's kind of saying like its value is, its value is, uh, chikwase pesos, six pesos. So now what the, doesn't have a verb for cost, but instead they would say the value of this thing. So this word pati, pati um, means like value. And I, it's always possessed. So I've never actually seen it as a noun with the TLI, but it, I guess it'd be patitli technically, patitli, but it sounds weird or yeah. So I've always, it's, all, it's always possessed. So if you want to say the value of something, it would be ipati, but if you want to say my value, you would say no pati, your value, mo pati, ipati, the value of something else, topati, our value, 
in in pati, their value, in mo pati, y'all's value. So this pati is really a noun that you can possess to, to say whose value you're talking about. And this word pat, pati also has the meaning of value. So do you want to say Nahuatl is a valuable language? You would say like Nahuatl kipiya y pati. You're saying Nahuatl has value. That's how you would express like Nahuatl is valuable. Nahuatl kipiya y pati. Nahuatl has its value. That's what you're saying literally, but um, that's how you would say like Nahuatl is valuable. Um, the word patillo, patillo with the Y-O-H means expensive or very valuable. So patillo is how you say expensive. You say, if you say ash patillo means it's cheap, <laughs> ash patillo. It's not, it's not expensive, it's cheap, ash patillo. <laughs> uh -huh. And then finish off the sentence for us, finish off the story. Okay, Keman Kikoki Ome Tsone Kawili Ayokana Ki Pishki Tomin Daniala. Oh, there I go with the Ayikana and Ayokana. And what was Ayokana again? Mm -hmm. No longer. No longer. Mm -hmm. okay. I used to get them confused because they're so similar, Ayikana and Ayokana, and they mean the opposite. So you just have to practice with yourself. <laughs> Be like, Ayokana, like basically the way I remember Ayokana is like, if I was ever angry at somebody, I would tell them Ayokana, like don't do this any longer, no longer, ya basta. It would be something like in Spanish, like ya basta, Ayokana or Ayok. So that's how I remember the difference. And I just remember Ayokana is the opposite of that. <laughs> but honestly, you could probably come up with your own way to remember it. But I now know it because I've used it many times, but it's at the very beginning, they're confusing because they're so similar. All right, so keman kikohki ometsonekawili when when she bought two hats, ayokana no longer kipishki o tomin Daniela. Daniela no longer had money. It's a very simple story. <laughs> All right, and how was the rest of this homework? Was it hard? I don't think this, the rest was hard, but the story is hard. And then I asked you about about the story. So did you understand that part? I understood most of the questions. Sorry, I feel like I'm like dominating the class today, but it's fine. Uh, uh, for number five down there where it says Klen Kichiwas Ika Itsone Kawi. I wasn't sure. So like it's like what what is she gonna do with a hat? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's she gonna do with a hat? Like what's really it, how to answer what's that? It for? Well, I mean, if you, um, so my answer was that she was going to use it so she wouldn't be hot. So Nel Kiamatki Tsonekawili Pampa Ash Kiamatki Patsmikis, she really likes hats because she doesn't like to be hot, but it's really up to your interpretation. Honestly, these questions are kind of open-ended, and if you want to answer it differently and you think she wants it for something else, maybe you have a different take on it. Maybe she wants it because she wants to not be in uh, burnt or she doesn't want to be in the sun or whatever she wants to be more in the shade or she doesn't want wrinkles or whatever you could have put whatever answer you wanted to put these these answers are um, up to you and more they're more for you to be able to try to express your idea whatever that idea is and if you can't express it then you ask me how you would probably say something and hopefully I can help you <laughs> but my interpretation is so she won't be hot Okay, how about number nine where it says, Kemon Peki Tlapo Alisli Kipia Tsone Kawili. So I think is that verb supposed to be Pewa? Um, well, it's, it can be Pewa or Peki because it depends how I, what I'm asking you. But in this question, I'm asking you, how did it, how did the story, when, when the story started is what I'm asking you. But I guess you could also ask this question as when the story starts, but it, at the end of the day, the question's mostly the same, but uh, it could be pewa or pehki. Okay, I just wanna make sure I had that verb right, but that makes sense. Cause then that makes number 10 make sense of when the story ends. Uh huh. Yeah, so this pewa is from pe, uh, pehki is from pewa, and um, you, it doesn't seem very recognizable, right? Because you're like, wait, 
pehki and pewa, but it's because this is a class two verb. So pewa, drop the A, the U and the H need to flip and it becomes pehki. Quali. And so it's not clear always when you see class two verbs, you, you might be like, what is this a class two verb? But you have to get um, more used to being like, okay, it kind of looks like this. I'm gonna guess it's this. And majority of verbs are class two verbs. So your best guess is it's probably a class two verb. And then, you know, take away the, the key and be like, okay, there's a UH. So that must have been flipped. So it must it must come from PHU and then be like, okay, it's it's either pewi or pewa. And then you will go look up under pewi or pewa. And pewa is the only one that actually exists. And um, then that's how you know it's pewa, it's, it's to begin. These are all very good questions. And don't okay, feel like you're probably... because these are good questions. Good. Mm -hmm. No other questions? Let's go look through my comments. <laughs> well, I have a question. Okay, Kuali. Okay, so you you went through before. Yes. We connect two nouns, right? And mm -hmm. then, and then what, what you did, I think, with the with the man who sells fish, you mm -hmm. did Nietzsche, Namakiltia, I think. And uh -huh. what? And, and how do you? What's, what's the rule for putting nouns in front of vowels? Or are you going to get to that later? Wait, namaka doesn't have a, 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 a vowel. It has a it has a consonant. Right, but you had niche in front of it, for the, where you had the the the, the fish salesman. Niche mm -hmm, mm -hmm. namaka ket. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Niche namaka ket. Uh huh. And okay. But can you put a, a noun in front of a verb or no? Yes. So there's a, I believe I, did I do a class on, I don't remember. I thought I did a class already called noun incorporation. But you I, did noun to noun. I don't remember noun to verb. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, no, I thought I did. So let me go check my lessons. Cause I, so I did, I've done so many lessons. I don't remember. I think I did a noun incorporation one and maybe yeah. I just didn't make it really clear. Let me see. I think I did do a noun, here it is. Compound nouns and noun incorporation. So noun incorporation is basically noun pr plus verb. Compound nouns is noun plus noun, and noun incorporation is noun plus verb. So I did do one on season one, episode 20, and then let me go see what I told you, because maybe I just didn't do enough to make it clear, but um, oh, here it is. So I have here, shochi namaka. So essentially, here it is. You, this is one, this is a very similar example to the, the fish seller guy. Um, when you have a noun that you want to add to a verb, you're going to put the verb at the end and then you're going to take the noun and remove the absolutive ending. So, in the word meeting, the absolutive ending is in. So, you need to remove the in from the meeting and it becomes meech. And then you add the verb namaka. So, meech namaka means to sell fish. Right here, it's shochi namaka. The original word is shochi. The TL is the absolutive. You have to remove the TL. It becomes shochi, and then it goes shochi namaka. OK, thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. So I guess go to season one, episode 20. I don't know how much in depth, depth I covered it, but um, or maybe I should have gone more in depth. But, but yeah, I did cover it. Let's see. Uh, I have, I have, all these. I have a simple question. Yes. So again, you know how in English um, you can just you can change a sentence into a question just by intonation. Mm -hmm. Does that happen um, with yes. Uh, yes? Yes. Okay. Okay. So it, it's actually in in English. You know where when a question is there because like the word order most of the time. Yeah. Because you say instead of saying what it is, what versus what is it? It's the order that matters. Although the intonation matters too. But in Nahuatl, um, it's Nahuatl is very much like Spanish. So, like if you say in Spanish, you would say la casa es grande, the house is big. 
you could also uh, in Nahuatl, uh, so, so changing it in Spanish say, la casa es grande, the intonation between the statement and the question makes it a question, makes it a question. Same thing now. So if you want to say the, the house is big, you say Cali, Weyi, or Weyi, Cali. Actually, it doesn't matter now what, which way you say it. You say Cali, Weyi, or Weyi, Cali. Um, and then by changing the intonation, it would be understood as a question because there is no is in, in the, in the now what. But now what does also have word, also has words that are question words like Tlen, Keniski, um, I can't think of any right now, Ahkia, Katlia. So there's question words that indicate that there's a question, but then in, in certain constructions like this is this, or is this something, the only difference is the intonation. Or like you were saying, is he jumping, Witoni? Witoni is he is jumping, but if you change the intonation, Witoni, uh, it changes to is he jumping? So it is both. It has question words and it also, the intonation also, makes it a question. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, I hope my phone, no, no, we're, we're good. Okay, <laughs> my phone's at 20% battery. <clears throat> okay, um, I'm gonna look through some of these questions. The, a lot of these are comments and not questions. So somebody had already asked me what alternate meant in the last question session. So I'm not gonna answer that question. These are all comments. These are not questions. Question. A lot of these are do uh, that people ask me uh, have a lot to do with identity, and so those questions are always really hard. <laughs> so I don't like to overwhelm you. Plus, I, I feel like I'd rather focus on the grammar. But a lot of these comments that I read a long time ago, they're all about like identity and this and that. Um, I agree with all the compliments. Uh, a lot. Oh, a lot of people, by the way, are really happy that I'm teaching this because they feel like they're reconnecting to their heritage, which I think is cool. That is part of my mission. Um, these are not. These are all not questions. They're all comments. Comments. Can you give me some powerful Nahuatl incantations? I'd much appreciate it. Okay, Elliot. Unfortunately, <clears throat> I'm not very well uh, aware of of the religious aspect of um, Nahuatl because I'm not religious myself. So I don't involve myself in such things, but I know that uh, the Nahuatl people are generally um, <clears throat> typically religious, not all, but most. So they pro could probably tell you uh, more than I can. <clears throat> Although I do know one song that is specifically, um, is specifically uh, to mother earth and um, it's called to, to um, which is actually a uh, uh, original Nahuatl song that got translated into Spanish and is now used in the Catholic Church as La Guadalupana. And I actually know it in Nahuatl and I sing it during one of the, our meetings. So that's the only one that I know that has a religious connotation. But there is a whole book um, called Cantares Mexicanos by I think Miguel Leon Portilla. Cantares Mexicanos. If you go and get that book, you can find a bajillion <laughs> incantations that are original um, Nahuatl incantations from the 1500s, if you really want to find them. But if you want to find uh, modern ones, you probably have to talk to a modern speaker or, or, or a modern um, Nahuatl religious person. Because I don't know any, no, except for that one song that I told you. But Cantares Mexicanos is probably your best resource if you want to get now I think incantations. Uh, these are all not questions. Oh, I'll see some people write to me in now what? Uh, ah, so this person is saying, you said the word Nikla. I don't know if I already answered this question. Um, you put the word, you, you also, we say the word ora to mean hour in our variety of Nahuatl, the, the variety that this guy is learning. But he says, I never knew that the word kawit was a word to mean time in Nahuatl or hour. And I wanna say that a lot of people who are, even a lot of native speakers, they don't know the word for hour or they don't have a word for hour. And generally they'll say the word ora, which is a Spanish borrowing to mean hour. And that's because they didn't have hours. 
So they had to borrow a word. Now the word kawit means time. And so in modern Huastacanahuatl, from the, the right that we learned, we use the word kawit to, in, in the general meaning is time. So if you want to say, what time is it? You would say tlen kawit. But to not say ora, they just say uh, nawi kawit for quote unquote time. So four hour is how it's understood. So like means four o'clock. Nawi kawit is how they would say it. Just basically not to borrow from Spanish. But uh, kawit just means time. And in our variety, we use it as to mean the hour, like which hour. Uh, but some people will still say now we order to mean to say like four o'clock now we order. Uh, thank you so much. This is uh, uh, the Tlatol Tapasoli group. I think did I already? I, I feel like I already answered this question multiple times. Somebody said the Tlatol Tapasoli group in LA that you mentioned is that open to join or is it or is it on a specific social media platform? I don't know if I already answered this. I felt like I did. Uh, Tato Tapasoli was a, is a physical group where we used to meet every Sunday before the pandemic. And now we don't because of the pandemic, but here and there we meet on Zoom. But right now it's on pause because uh, we, I guess we're not meeting in person and we're, we all got lazy and aren't meeting every Sunday like we used to. <laughs> Basically it's a physical group that became online and then dissolved, but we're all still friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, maybe it'll resume when it's all over. Uh, I don't see a lot, a lot of other questions. Some other people did ask me other questions, but I don't know why they don't pop up here. Uh, they asked me questions that I thought I had already answered. And these are, these are questions I already answered. Maybe these are the ones I haven't answered yet. I don't know mentions nobody's mentioned me apparently um any other general questions sorry for the crazy internet thing my phone was not working well my phone overheats for some reason because i got a new phone and it's supposed to be an iphone it's supposed to be good clearly it overheats and then my computer which is also a mac is like six years old <laughs> so it's getting slower and slower so every time i try try to turn on the program it's like that beach ball that goes in circles <laughs> and it's thinking about how i press the button <laughs> anyways and that's why i was not able <laughs> to meet you all and that's why i was late but i'm gonna um oh James says there's a study group Friday 6 to 7. Yay. OK, cool. Um, but yeah, I apologize. I plan on getting a new computer. So probably next week, I'm not going to have this problem. But I do have a plan for next week. I'm going to teach you about the tense yaya. Yeah. And I'm also going to teach you about how to combine two noun, uh, two verbs. Not Well, there are um, ways to combine two verbs. But ooh, one of them is a little crazy. OK, but um, I'm going to teach you about when you have like an auxiliary verb, like to continue to play, to start to dance to stop dancing, um, to like to eat, like when you have two verbs together and how Nahuatl deals with those and in, in different tenses. So that's that gonna like, be the focus next week. Mm -hmm. Would that I be like, mm -hmm. está haciendo or something? It's not like está haciendo, it's like, paro de comer, um, continuo caminando, um, like that. I like, I continue to walk when you have two verbs like that. I stop eating. I love, no, I love eating is, is well, I love eating is, is actually a possibility. Um, I want to run. You, you already know that one, I want to run. But basically we have two verbs like that together. That's what the next class is about. All right, Quali. I apologize for the craziness. And uh, James De La Rosa is putting uh, here on the chat his, the Zoom ID and the passcode for the study session. If you want to join, there it is. Um, write it down before we end the meeting if you want to join. I'm going to give you one minute, I guess. And then I'm not going to announce it to the, the world because this is being recorded. But, <laughs> but if you are curious about joining this uh, James's study group, go ahead. Contact James. 
All right. Timoitase Imo Juantin and Timoitase Chikweyiok. All right, let's end this meeting. Where is the end? All right. Timoitase.